And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Michael Funk to give a few words of welcome. Michael Funk, where are you at? Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We've got uh, over 400 so far and more joined. Uh, I've been given a strict three minutes to welcome you and uh, thank you for coming to the space. Expanded Learning Opportunities Program. Uh, many of you on this uh, call are experienced with this, have had experience with ACES 21st Century Community Learning Centers. Expanded learning is your work, is your life. And some of you may be coming to the space and haven't really had a chance to dig into this. And you're realizing that 23-24 fiscal year is where you really have to get this program ramped up and accountability measures and audit starts. You're all welcome. I would just say that uh, everyone, I hope, comes here as a learner because People who have had a career with expanded learning have spent a year and a half now memorizing, digging into ed code, reading all the FAQs. I still find that there's nuance that is missed and different mis misinterpretations. And, and I'm just going to own that that includes me. It was just a couple of days ago that I was in a conversation with some of my team and we were discussing a particular detail of if X happens, then what happens with Y? And, and we realized we didn't really know the answer. We had to do some more digging. So uh, I hope everyone comes here as a learner today. And while we are talking about nuts and bolts and the basics, I've some of you have probably heard me talk about this several times in the past as a, whether you're an athlete or you're a musician or you're a writer, there are the best, the best, most experienced, talented individuals on the planet always come back to the fundamentals. When you watch an NBA player before the big game, they're working on their footwork, they're working on their free throws, they're working on their dribbling. When you look at a, the most accomplished symphony musician, before they get, go on stage, they practice their scales. And so coming back to the fundamentals is an essential part of the work. And you've also heard me say this before, the most critical nuts and bolts and fundamental aspect of this work is not the rules. It's not the nuance of the FAQs. You know what I'm gonna ask you? What do your children and family need and deserve? And if you could answer this question, like a year and a half ago, you said, if I only had more money, I would like. So start with the why, start with the purpose, start with what's possible. Start with what our children and family need and deserve. And now it's time to get into the nuts and bolts. I'll turn it back to Melissa. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead, Melissa. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Heather. So um, again, welcoming everyone to day one of our spring um, ELOP Academy Nuts and Bolts today's agenda. We've already welcomed you all into the space. In a moment, um, we will transition to our interactive session um, with our co-facilitators. We'll have a quick transition and then we'll close our time in regional breakouts. So we invite folks to stay for the regional breakouts um, spaces and we'll provide um, information on how to um, successfully join your breakout room with your regions. If you are posting on social media, we just ask that you use our tag for everything ELOP. So it's hashtag California C-A-E-L-O-P program. Um, and I'll take the next slide. A few reminders. Um, we um, have just finalized dates for our spring ELOP office hours. 
So later today, you'll be able to go onto the CAN webpage and register for upcoming spring office hours from April through June of this year. And of course, um, stay connected. Um, you can meet and connect with our CAN team, explore our latest resources, and connect also with our system of support for expanded learning, our SSEL. Um, and you can join our listserv to receive all things ELOP and stay um, connected with all the um, updated resources to support folks throughout the state. And also there's just a few days left for the Power of Us survey. Um, the survey does close on March 31st. And so again, we are asking folks to share this Q, you can scan the QR code. Um, we'll provide links in the chat and hoping that we increase the California responses in the Power of Us um, survey. Thank you. All right, and so now we are jumping into our interact interactive session. Um, I am happy to introduce um, Jen Taylor, Sterling Williams from the California Department of Ed, and our um, Heather Williams from the California After School Network. And so we'll spotlight you three and get us started with our interactive session. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. And just quickly, I um, got, got some questions slash notifications directly to me and in the chat box, um, but just wanted to flag Again, this is recorded. It'll go on our website after the fact and so and our YouTube channel. So you'll have access to the full recording slide deck. You'll actually get access to in just a moment. And um, those materials are available for you. If you receive a link to access those materials, that's not coming from us. Um, that's somebody else in the chat box. So um, please don't click that link. Um, but otherwise, yes, we will be sharing the slideshow and that will be dropped in in just a moment. And Melissa, I saw a request for the hashtag um, in the chat box again. So if you've got a second, drop that in and we will jump right in. We are covering a lot of content today in 50 minutes. And so we're going to do our best to go through this um, quickly and make sure you know you all can be engaged in the chat show and what are in the chat box and whatnot but um, we are covering a lot and so there will be time as Melissa said towards the end to have more of an interactive conversation um, so we're currently going over the plan for today we're going to spend some time talking about expanded learning so the expanded learning ecosystem it's more than just elop expanded learning is the broader um, concept so we're going to talk about that first then we're going to talk about the elop basics and how elop is a funding source to support expanded learning in california then navigating um, some common questions that we've seen come up in a lot of spaces um, and then share a few additional resources and transition to regional breakouts. So just clarifying for today's learning structure, we would love you all to engage in the chat box um, as we go throughout, share ideas, share thoughts, share resources, share promising practices um, for other attendees to kind of grab that. And then also you'll have, like I said, time at the end in the regional breakouts to actually um, share those with folks in your region. And then we are just about to drop this. Oh, thank you, Jen is right on time. Um, there is a reflection document that has just been dropped into the chat box. And so if you click on that, it'll ask you to make a copy. And so you can save a personal copy of this document. It has all the reflection questions. So as we go along, we'll have a few moments to pause and reflect on what we've talked about. This document, nobody else has access to it, is now your personal copy. So you can add notes into that document along the way. Even if you don't want to take notes, at the top of that Google Doc is a link to the slide deck, which I know you all want. So definitely um, click on that link. And then, like I said, again, join the facilitated regional breakouts at the end. Um, also noting we are covering a lot of content. It's going to be high level. And so um, we know folks are going to want to dig into the weeds. Um, and there will be opportunities to get more granular, just not right now in this moment. But if you're like, I have a very, very specific question, 
Um, there are great places to dig into that. So we do have the CDE FAQs that have a lot of details. Our office hours, Melissa talked about, are a great resource for that. Um, you can also reach out to the CDE help desk and engage with the system of support regional teams. So just wanted to flag that up front. Um, but as we're going through today, here's a few questions that you might consider. Um, again, there's a place to take notes on this on that Google Doc. What stands out from the session? Um, key phrases, quotes, ideas that come up for you. What is inspiring you as we go through this session? Um, how, what you are learning, how does that impact how you think about your work and or your role? And then lastly, what are strategies from today that you might implement within your own expanded learning program? And so with that, we're gonna jump into what is expanded learning and I'm gonna turn it over to Sterling to get us started. Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy to be with you this morning. Um, happy airy season. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna start pretty basic here, as Heather shared. Um, we're gonna really talk about what is expanded learning, and something that we like to do is really point out that expanded learning is a part of a greater effort uh, throughout California. Um, our state superintendent Tony Thurman really likes to just really share um all these different parts that are moving within california that include uh universal meals uh universal pre-k professional learning mental health uh these are all initiatives that are moving right now within california and you can see that expanded learning is one part of that uh so when you look at expanded learning and you think about expanded learning uh you should really be thinking about how it fits into this greater whole and all these other efforts that are moving throughout the state uh, next slide, please. Uh, so California programs, uh, if you look to the right, uh, you'll see our beautiful state. Um, it's not as sunny as we would like right now, but we still love it. Um, so what's the vision, right, for California programs? All of our programs are really designed to be student-centered and really preparing all of our students for college, career, and life. And these are mostly opportunities that couldn't be found in the regular school day. Uh, so if you look at some of our pre-pandemic funding, uh, we were using our ACES funding, which is better known as the After School Education and Safety Program, as well as 21st Century funding, um, which is uh, federal funding for uh, California and throughout uh, the nation. Uh, but if you look at this, you'll have 4,500 sites uh, throughout California. That's really the impact that we saw. And this is reaching up to uh, 980,000 students across the state. Uh, so we had a vast, um, getting pushed with the slides, we're getting a, a vast, a vast uh, contribution throughout the state to really impact students. Uh, and that was all the way from Imperial up to Humboldt County. Uh, the when. So when does expanded learning take place? Uh, before and after school, summer, and intercession. Uh, this can be found within Ed Code. You can refer to this on your own uh, to really get a deeper dive. But expanded learning is not during the school day, uh, but it's outside of that time to really give students an opportunity to expand their learning. Uh, so the what? Uh, this can be academic, social, emotional, and physical. Uh, so there's a lot of freedom there in terms of what that looks like. Uh, tutoring, a lot of SEL components, um, physical needs, mindfulness, meditation, yoga, all those things can be considered expanded learning. And the how, so what does that look like? Um, expanded learning, hands-on, engaging, student-centered, results-driven, uh, involve community partners and complement um, learning activities in the regular school day and the year. So not the same as what's happening in the school day, but something new, uh, really giving students the opportunity to uh, be in charge, be in charge of the learning. Uh, we're talking about project-based learning, things that take place uh, for a long period of time, possibly a culminating event. Uh, there's quite a bit of freedom there and results driven, really looking at data uh, taking in uh, student and student engagement and then also their feedback. So I'll pause there to see if there 
our contributions from the team, and then I'll pass it to Jen. Thanks, Darlene. So good morning, everyone. It, you know, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Expand Learning funding resources here in California. We're very fortunate. We're very fortunate to have so much support, state and federal, um, to support Expand Learning and through different methods as well. So you, a lot of you are here for the Expand Learning Opportunities Program, so that kind of second row there where it's about $4 billion in funding, state funding, um, that goes directly to LEAs, so formula-based. Uh, some other programs that we have are ACES, 21st Assets, are more site-level funding, so grants um, versus kind of that formula-based apportionment. And then uh, lastly, another opportunity that we had was as a result of COVID relief. So one-time COVID relief funding known, at, known as the Expanded Learning Opportunities Grant, federal funding uh, that was also formula-based. So lots of different um, you know, areas of funding. We've included all the relevant education code if you really wanna go and you know, sit and read um, some of the education code and specific requirements, uh, we have that. But we're just, we're really fortunate to have these multiple opportunities um, you know, it, to support expand learning in California. And just to highlight too, you know, in this kind of chart, we have, uh, you know, ACEs. We currently are so what Sterling had mentioned our af our ACEs after school education and safety program, seven hundred and fifty million, uh, you know, in total. Our twenty first century, one hundred and forty eight million, uh, you know, kind of continuing on, and then uh, that middle column, the expand learning opportunity grant at four point six billion. And then lastly, our uh, kind of the far right in that dark blue, our Expanded Learning Opportunities Program, ELOP, it, which is continuing to be ongoing at $4 billion. So I just want to highlight that, you know, Governor Newsom released in his state budget, proposed state budget for fiscal year 2023-2024, continued ongoing funding at $4 billion. So let's talk a little bit about foundation. Uh, we have our, if you've not, if you're new to expand and learning, or if you're not, you know, we have the quality standards for expand and learning in California. These are our aspirational, uh, you know, guidelines for building quality. And they really describe the levels of quality at a program at the programmatic staff and participant levels. And really, these quality standards are based on the real core learning principles of learning and after school and summer that, you know, learning is active, collaborative, meaningful, supports mastery and expands horizons. And so you'll see here all of the uh, 12 quality standards, and they're at different kind of, uh, you know, types. So the first being point of service. So what you'll see in, you know, with participants or students within an expanded learning program. So on the far left is the point of service. On the far right is more of the programmatic levels. And so as you are writing your expanded learning opportunity program plan um, or implementing, you know, a great way is to look at these quality standards as a way to not only write to or describe, but also to imp implement and aspire to grow and create quality within expanded learning. And what better way to hear about an expanded learning uh, than from youth themselves? We have this short video courtesy of ABC Unified down in uh, the Los Angeles area. Welcome to the Expanded, Expanded Learning Program. The homework component is designed to meet the needs of the students in the program. It could vary between 30 minutes to an hour based on grade level. During this time, staff members ensure students get adequate homework help during Program. They are also available to support students with their core curriculum, projects, and other classroom assignments. 
Students are encouraged to stay on task and work diligently in their learning location with the goal of completing all homework assignments. This program is designed to provide students with a variety of creative, hands-on, project-based learning activities, as well as youth leadership opportunities. Enrichment activities and clubs are provided every four to six weeks. Enrichment themes include visual and performing arts such as music, drama and theater, dance, art, poetry, painting, and media arts. There are STEM, robotics, health and nutrition, and career awareness. At the middle school programs, the staff offer enrichment clubs such as 3D printing, law and order, fashion design, leadership, auto, debate, photography, criminal justice, and anime and manga cartooning. A 20 to 30 minute break is provided for students to go outside, socialize with their friends, and enjoy snacks brought from home or food that the Nutrition Services Department provides for the program. Some of the snacks served include but are not limited to are muffins, juice, teddy bear graham crackers, milk, my personal favorite, string cheese, and yogurt, and sometimes even popsicles. And it's good for the like heat. <laughs> Tasty treats are given to students on special occasions such as Fun Food Friday. Living an active and healthy lifestyle is important in the expanded learning program. We have 45 to 60 minutes to get moving every single day. We participate in a variety of fun physical activities such as soccer, volleyball, dance, cheer, jump rope, flag football, and basketball. The staff also organizes team building exercises, fitness games, relay races, and even obstacle courses. <laughs> Our program operates three to four and a half hours after school, depending on the school's dismissal time. In the expanded learning program, we have a small staff to student ratio. For TK and kindergarten students, the ratio is one to 10. For in, students in first to eighth grade have a one to 20 ratio during the program. For more information about the expanded learning program, including registration, please visit our website at abcusd.us. graham crackers, uh, milk. Please visit our. Oh wait, dot. No, no, no. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the. Oh wait, y'all messed up. Welcome. Your word is welcome. Really, just registration. <laughs> All right, who was inspired from that video? Who wants to do obstacle courses now, right? So we, we want to give you an opportunity to reflect on the video. Maybe you heard of some wonderful activities that you'd like to include. That, you know, that we were definitely inspired by this video with that, uh, all the different opportunities mentioned. So we're just going to give you a, a moment to reflect. You have that, that uh, reflection document. You go ahead and uh, you know reflect on that and share within your notes how you uh, what what inspired you from the video. And I will say, if you have anything, you can, you know, take all your notes in your personal document. But if you have something you'd like to share with everybody else, feel free to drop those ideas into the chat box. And 
feel free to still keep thinking about that, but we are on a tight schedule. So Sterling, turning it back to you. Thanks, Heather. Uh, I wish I could tag in the kids to talk about Edco. They made it sound really exciting and I was pumped up. I haven't been able to do that yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my best here. Um, what, so what's the intent, right, of ELLP? This is new funding. Um, you know, LEAs are really excited about receiving this apportionment, but are really trying to figure out what's the point of it. So uh, what we're trying to highlight is, you know, these are billions of dollars, right, that are going out to the state uh, to all LEAs yearly, right? And so uh, the, what we're really trying to lift up is that this is an opportunity to really meet those needs of kids and provide these new opportunities uh, for TK through six, right? And that's for LEAs that serve those students in TK through six uh, to really ensure that students in California have equal access to comprehensive and transformative expanded learning opportunities. And so you got kind of a glimpse of what that looked like uh, in the video. Uh, some of the key details about this program, um, this was announced uh, by Governor Newsom and the May budget revised back in May, 2021. Uh, so funding has been going out since then. Um, this established this funding and one thing we like to uh, highlight and that's why it's bolded in red, it's ongoing. Uh, so this is something that's gonna continue uh, throughout the state of California. This is something that LDAs can count on. And it's, um, it's important to note that this isn't something we're saying is gonna happen in the future. This has already started, right? Back in 2021, LDA started to receive an apportionment. So uh, as Michael mentioned, going back to that wish list that many of you all had about what would you do if you just had the funding, many of you are getting the funding already. So, um, you know, be, be bold and be creative. Um, the last uh, couple of things that I'll note, uh, you should operate as a single comprehensive program. Uh, so really looking at all the streams of revenue that you have, um, all the funding sources that are coming in to support kids, uh, ELOP uh, can be used to kind of complement that. Um, and the intent for this uh, is to offer uh, all students access to expanded learning programs, prioritizing on duplicated pupils, and that was a new word for me a couple of years ago. So went to EdCode. Uh, EdCode defines unduplicated pupils as a people enrolled in a school district or a charter school who is classified as an English learner, eligible for a free or reduced price meal or a foster youth. And so some of the program elements that we wanna highlight here, uh, similar to ACES in 21st century, programs, um, and those are educational and literacy element. Uh, again, that includes your tutoring and homework, uh, some of the subject matters, language arts, social science, uh, computer training, so coding, all that stuff would count, uh, as well as educational enrichment session, uh, so the fine arts, CTE, or career technical education, physical fitness, and again, some of those um, uh, races and obstacle courses. Uh, next slide, please. So days and hours of operation. Uh, ELOP is to take place on all school days and in person. Uh, again, with expanded learning, this is before and or after school and for no less than nine hours. So how do you calculate the nine hours? Uh, that is your core day plus your expanded learning opportunity has the equal nine hours. So just Real quick here, if your core day was, for example, six hours uh, and you have to get to nine hours in total, your expanded learning opportunity would need to be three hours. Uh, additionally, this takes place during non-school days, also in person uh, for at least 30, 30 days uh, for no less than nine hours. And this is inclusive of extended school year days and Saturdays. So this is one of those technical slides, it's okay. I feel some of the tension. We have uh, support for you all going forward, understanding the ed code, uh, as well as uh, additional um, slide decks that really illustrate all of these facts and our FAQs uh, that really break down all the nuances here. Uh, again, just highlighting this program is in-person. Uh, so students have to be in-person and programming can be provided in a variety of formats. 
Uh, the big example I give is uh, maybe origami. So if you are in person uh, with your staff member and your students, you might put on a YouTube video uh, that allows for students to see kind of a step-by-step -step process. And there is no uh, attendance requirement for this program. Uh, and attendance is based on the individual needs of students and families. And there is a frontier exception. Uh, so program requirements for frontier uh, is that is no less than eight hours. It's the same combination for the uh, 180 days or the school days, uh, as well as for the 30 non-school days, it is eight hours doing the same calculation, um, but having one less hour as a requirement. And we have resources within our FAQs that help you figure out if you are frontier. And student eligibility and fees. So every student is eligible to participate. Uh, and for fees, uh, you cannot charge homeless youth, foster youth, or students eligible for free and reduced price meals. And if you do decide to have a family fee, uh, it should be on a sliding scale and based on the ability to pay. And with that, I'm going to pass it to Heather but also pause to see if we need to add anything. Um, there's, I will say there's a lot of questions in the chat box and thanks to the folks who are responding quickly to many of them. I know there's some questions around offer and access and unduplicated pupil percentage. And we do have some slides that we'll chat a little bit more about that in a few moments. Um, and, you know, we're, we'll do our best to continue to answer questions in the chat box. And if they don't get answered today, highly recommend coming to office hours so um, with that gonna walk through a few more of some of the basic requirements so staffing requirements um, staffing requirements for elop is going to be very similar to those of aces the exception being for tk um, k so it's a 20 to 1 staffing ratio except for tk to k which is a 10 to 1 ratio um, and then Basically, any of your staff who directly supervise students must meet the district's qualifications for an instructional aid or IA. Um, did want to call out some really promising practices that are essential around staffing your program. LEAs have the flexibility to revise their district policy and can create an IA classification and or exam to better measure the qualifications and competencies. So you can create a separate expanded learning IA. So your, your district is allowed to have multiple classifications and exams, so you could create one. Um, if you're finding that you're having trouble getting staff through the IA process and or it doesn't match or in alignment with um, what your needs are for your expanded learning programs, you can work with your district to create one tailored to expanded learning. Um, and Title I districts, this comes up often, but if you are a Title I district, your IAs and expanded learning do not need to meet the um, Title I IA requirements if you are funding them with expanded learning funding. And yes, um, I'm seeing a question. TK and K4 expanded learning is 10 to 1. Um, I rec recognize in other spaces it's 12 to 1, but in expanded learning it's 10 to 1. All right, and moving along, um, there are collaboration expectations or in highly encouraged and um, very much so encouraged that um, to maximize your funding with ELOP that you do collaborate with community based organizations or CBOs, um, as well as child care providers, especially those that are participating in um, subsidized programs like the California State Preschool Program. Um, and then just a little bit about funding. We've already covered this earlier, um, but there is $4 billion in ongoing funding. Um, that's what our budget is this year. That's what it is proposed to be next year, just for ELOP. Um, and then those dollars are sent out as an apportionment to LEAs based off of average daily attendance and unduplicated pupil percentage. Um, there is like more detail about exactly how that all is calculated. So if you're interested in digging into that or you want to find out um, current apportionment details, there's links in this slide deck so you can kind of dig into those details um, and access 
CDE has a much longer PowerPoint presentation that goes through a lot of this in detail so you can dig in. Um, and then just wanted, this has been mentioned, but just wanna highlight this for sure. We do have a program plan guide for um, ELOP. Uh, you can access this on the CDE website. It's on the main page, super easy to find. This is considered a living document. Um, so it can change just because you've adopted it doesn't mean you can't change it. In fact, it should be reviewed and updated at a minimum of every three years, um, but you can certainly update it more often if needed. Um, and then you want to work collaboratively with your partners and staff, your community. This, this conversation should include parents, families, students, youth voice is super important. So all of those partners to develop this um, plan in the first place, and then also each time you review it. And it needs to be approved by the LEA's governing board in a public meeting and posted on the LEA's website. So I know a lot of folks are like, when is this due? When do I have to turn it into CDE? It doesn't have a due date. You don't have to turn it into CDE, but your board must adopt it and it must go on to um, the LEA's website. And then um, in terms of compliance, because this is you know, something that everybody always wants to know, how is all of this being enforced? So beginning in fiscal year 2023 20, through 2024, LEAs are subject to audit. So that's the first year the programs are actually subject to audit. So um, this current fiscal year, last fiscal year, these are considered like initial years, ramp up years. Um, so they will not be subject to audit next fiscal year is the first year um, ELOP funding will be subject to audit. An audit guide is coming soon. Um, and so the CDE crew has been hard at work on that. It will likely be posted for public comment um, soon, sometime this spring, and then it'll be finalized and it'll be um, available before July 1st is the plan. All right, and so we're going to watch a little clip. And so um, Heather Pilgrim is the superintendent of Oak Valley Union um, Elementary School District. And we met Heather, um, I think, sometime last year. And, you know, she was like having, a, she comes from a small school district, was having a lot of questions about how to implement this program. When her district first got the funding, she's feeling very stressed out about it. This whole clip is a lot longer. Heather and I um, were able to join AXA to talk about what they were working on in terms of implementation. And so I highly recommend you watch the whole clip if you're interested, but we're gonna play just kind of a quick clip of her sharing what she learned and how she was exploring using these dollars. So yeah, play that so, uh, now. So once I got myself past the, uh, the angst that you talked about, um, I had, I had to approach it with a different mindset. And I am a CTE teacher at heart. And one of my joys uh, as an administrator is to be able to create programs and opportunities for students. So I had to really look at this program in that, uh, through that lens. So what I ended up um, doing is starting to look at the instructional day and the electives and enrichment activities that we were having and some that we are actually um, installing for next year. We are a, um, you know, centrally located in California. We're developing an ag program and we added a, a farm and an ag teacher uh, this year. So I started thinking about, okay, we need to uh, be able to extend these opportunities after school for those that may not have the opportunity to um, take that course during the day. So once I started thinking it in that um, realm, I then started uh, bringing in, well, what about VAPA, our visual and performing arts program? So I talked to the teachers and really wanted to see if they would be willing to build their programs through the after school program. Not that they have to offer it every day, but be able to be available and have choice for students who maybe want to take um, ag after school. We have. Um, awesome. So cliffhanger. I know that was too. Um, so once I got my. So, there we go. 
a little bit of cliffhanger. Definitely check out the full video. Heather's exploring all sorts of cool stuff in her district with the ELOP dollars. Um, but just want to take a moment to reflect. Um, and these questions again are in your uh, Google Doc if you want to take notes there. Um, but where are you currently at in terms of implementing an expanded learning program? And how might you pilot something to help you bring your program closer to meeting these basic requirements that we've outlined? So again, we, this year we're still in kind of implementation or um, in process of ramping up. And so next year is really the first year of full implementation. So if you're not already kind of fully ramped up, what's something that you could potentially pilot? Um, this coming spring to help you get closer to meeting those requirements. And then also just thinking about what um, the superintendent shared, how might you partner with members of your community to build out your program? And as you're thinking about that, we're just, we want to make sure because I've seen a lot of questions about this in the chat box. So we are going to kind of jump right into our next section and talk about some of the common questions that do come up. We're seeing them in the chat. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Sterling to talk about offer and provide access. Thanks, Heather. Um, appreciate getting all the fun parts in this slide deck, it's great. Um, I just wanna also highlight something I'm seeing in the chat as well. Um, a lot of uh, nuances that are here and we understand it and there's no pressure to understand everything about ulop by the time that this web this workshop is over right uh cde can a lot of folks that have been doing expanded learning have been asking questions have been unpacking things uh and it's it's still it's still happening today uh, a lot of the questions i'm seeing they have answers but some of them will need more information to really make you feel comfortable uh, so really just want to remind you all just kind of take this opportunity to uh, listen to some of the requirements, but then also keep the vision at heart uh, and, and really keep students uh, centered. Uh, so getting back into the fun stuff, EdCode, uh, what does offer mean? So offer means to recruit, advertise, publicize, or solicit through culturally and linguistically effective and appropriate communication channels. Um, that that's a lot of different things right that could be in person parent meetings that could be the uh, text message apps all the different things just making sure that you're reaching out to uh, parents and families and this requirement is met next slide provide access so i'll read this as well uh, provide access means to enroll in the elop if a parent or guardian has a signed ELLP registration form and that form is on file, that student shall be considered enrolled in ELLP. So this is different than some of the programs in the past and current with ACES and 21st century uh, that deal with serving students. Uh, ELLP is really about offering the program and providing access. And we really wanna highlight that part uh, to make sure that LEAs understand the difference and how they can really make both of these programs work together. The additional part of provide access deals with transportation. Uh, so for an LEA receiving an ELLP apportionment, uh, transportation shall be provided for any student who attends a school that is not operating an ELLP to attend a location that is providing an ELLP and to return to their original location or another location that is established by the LEA. I know that is a mouthful. What you wanna focus on is offering and providing programming as many of your school sites as you can. Um, but if you are not, if you're not offering a program at a certain uh, location, then you'll have to make sure that a student has access to that and transportation will have to be provided. And this is something that the legislature uh, is aware of. And so their intent is to have LEAs have programming at each of the school sites that they have. Uh, if not, then there would need to be transportation for that student to access programming. So getting into 2023 and 24 requirements, 
uh, LEAs with an unduplicated people percentage or UPP at or above 75% shall offer to all students in TK through six access to ELOPs and provide access to any, any student whose parent or guardian requests their placement in the program. So when you're looking at this after this workshop, you'll be toggling between this slide and the previous slide. What does offer mean? What does provide access mean? Um, these requirements are going to be starting up for the 23-24 fiscal year. So LEAs with an unduplicated pupil percentage below 75% shall offer to at least all unduplicated students in TK through six access to ELOPs and provide access to any unduplicated student whose parent or guardian requests their placement in the program. Um, so I imagine that is uh, a lot for folks to kind of digest in comparison to other programs, but the intent uh, of this program is really just providing these opportunities for young people and a focus on unduplicated pupils. And with that, I think I'm going to pass it to Jen. I also, before we get into talking about a single comprehensive program, I did see in the chat to uh, quite a few questions and, you know, different scenarios posed around special education students. And we do, we have a couple of FAQs on that. Um, there are 51 F FAQs, by the way. Uh, so we do have a, quite a few FAQs that actually talk about a lot of different questions that have been posed in the chat. But, you know, as far as special education, we encourage you connecting, um, you know, at the site level, because it's very, every, it's all dependent on, you know, kind of the student and their needs. And it's a locally determined, you know, how accommodations or supports are made. And that should be in partnership um, specifically with an, like an IEP team. So that we encourage collaboration at the site level with the principal. Um, you know, so you may want to connect with your special education department or division or office, whatever it may be at your LEA. In, have, in those conversations. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, so let's move to comprehensive program. And we're gonna talk a little bit about ratio within this too. I saw some uh, comments about ACES ratio and ELOP ratio, so we'll get to that. Let's talk about student groups though. So we, as Sterling had mentioned, you know, a single comprehensive program with ACES 21st and ELOP. And so if you look at the student groups here, so for ACES and 21st, priority enrollment is for uh, homeless foster youth students eligible for free and reduced price meal. Okay, that's within the education code within the statute for priority enrollment. If you look at ELOP with the unduplicated pupil percentage, so UPP student groups, you'll see students eligible for free and reduced price meal, foster youth, English learner. Very similar, right? There are a couple differences. You know, ACES 21st mentions homeless youth, um, ELOP mentions English learner, but there's a lot of alignment there um, with similarities with the student groups. So as you're looking at a, a developing a single comprehensive program, looking to align these student groups within, uh, you know, your priority, within your enrollment for ACES, um, your offer and access for ELOP. So really looking at them through that lens, how can I support these specific student groups? And also, um, as you're writing your ELOP plan, you want to look at your ACES program plan at the same time. They're both written to the quality standards. So I also wanted to mention that um, as far as program design. Very, we did that, that was intentionally to make sure there was alignment. Ratio. So we talked a little bit about ratio for ACES 20 to 1, for ELOP 20 to 1 for first grade and up, 10 to 1 for transitional kindergarten and kindergarten. So in this case, if you are developing a single comprehensive program, you want to make sure that that more stringent requirement for ELOP is met for the transitional kindergarten and kindergarten. So 20 to 1 for first grade and up, 10 to 1 for transitional kindergarten and kindergarten. Okay. So as you're developing that, making sure that that kind of more stringent. And then lastly, for early release policy, that is a specific requirement for ACES. 
as well within statute. And if you are developing a comprehensive program, you want to make sure that you have that early release policy, right, for ELOP as well. So developing that. And, uh, you know, it, it's just also good promising practice, right? The parents don't, uh, the parents are used to the policy. They've seen it. So following the same policy just would be easier for families, parents, guardians, um, as well as students as you're kind of continuing. And uh, you wanna, you know, you wanna make sure that you have that in place and you're following your policy as well. So that is a big piece. And um, lastly, as you're building a comprehensive program, you really wanna make sure that you, you can think of it as a expanded learning quilt. Right. And there you have different resources, ACES, ELOP, and you might have other resources. I know I saw in the chat CCTR and different child care resources that the youth think of it as one expanded learning program. But on the kind of the back end, what you know are all these funding resources are coming together to support one expanded learning program. The youth don't know. But you do, right? Because there are different, you know, funding resources that need to be tracked fiscally uh, and maintained in different ways. And there may be specific requirements for those other funding resources related to child care that you also may want to keep in mind as well, too. We only talked about ACEs and ELOP for this uh, particular, you know, segment, but the other funding resources may have more stringent requirements, too, you want to keep in mind. So let's let's reflect a little bit. Jen, real quick for the um, early release policy, just because this is something um, I've heard a lot about. I I think, and I've seen things in the chat box about this. Right, folks are like, oh, how do who do we count for Aces? Who do we count for ELOP? What if an Aces kid like they they have to stay till six? The ELOP kids don't have to stay till six. Um, and so just some clarification there, right, that one, a student can count for both ELOP and ACES. We're not taking attendance for ELOP. So the students that are participating in your program can count for the ACES attendance. You're not, um, right now we're not tracking ELOP attendance. If we do track attendance, it won't be for the sake of funding, it would just be for informational purposes. So you don't have to worry about like what student, you know, how do I move the students from counting for attendance for both of those programs and the early release guidance. Um, students in ACES programs can leave before six. You just have to have that early release policy. And so you can bring those things into alignment. And I really recommend looking at the updated guidance because there was some common practices around early release that um, have been clarified now that actually do really allow ELOP and ACES to work very well together. So it would just be digging into that um, a little bit more. Um, and I will. Sorry I had to interrupt, but I just wanted, I hear that all the time, so I wanted to make sure um, to say that explicitly and turn it back to you to reflect and then we'll start to close out. No, thanks Heather. I think that's, a, that's oftentimes what we hear too, like, uh, you know, our students have to stay until six. I mean, that's a lot, you know, a lot of times it's written to the policy or, you know, programs written into a policy like attendance requirements because they had a waiting list. And now we don't have oftentimes a waiting list because we have ELOP, right, to expand spots. So, no, thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. So we're going to give a little bit of time for you to reflect, uh, you know, on additional, on different funding sources um, or other initiatives. Think about other initiatives within your LEA that you could leverage or partnership, um, you know, things like community schools or mental health resources. So, you know, those are just some ideas too that you can reflect on. And I think we're almost out of time. So I'm gonna pass it over to Sterling to close us out. Thanks, uh, Heather and, and Jen, I'll just, add just a couple of things I saw in the chat as well. This is a fiscal year requirement. So yes, starting July 1, going to June 30th, 
And if you are uh, an LEA that was providing an um, ELOP opportunity at each of your school sites, then that wouldn't require you to then offer transportation to because a student would have access at their home school. Um, resources. So a lot of your questions in the chat um, and you will come up with after today. Uh, we're here to support. Again, this wasn't meant to um, get full clarity after this workshop. Um, so some of the things that are here for you, uh, the FAQs, the link for those have been posted in the chat a few times. Uh, again, there are 51 uh, and counting. Um, we developed those based on conversations and uh, scenarios, nuances that come up from the field. Um, so those are helpful and, and available to you now. Um, our ELOP webpage um, is, is also available that has links to program funding uh, as well as other uh, resources like CAN. Our help desk is there for some of the nuanced questions that come up. Um, you can use that. Uh, the quality standards for expanded learning, uh, which you talked about before, I think Jen mentioned, uh, those help frame your program and also will help you uh, develop your program plan. Uh, SSEL contact information, so some of the great folks that have been uh, answering your questions in the chat, uh, that is available too. Uh, the great folks that can and their information and a link to entitlements and apportionments to see uh, how much money you've already maybe been given and, and what's probably coming in the future. And with that, I will open it up to Heather and or Jen before maybe passing it back to Melissa. I will just say a huge thank you to Jen and Sterling for um, helping work on this slide deck and this presentation. There's so much content. So like boiling it down to like, what are the basics um, is not a small task. And we know you have a lot of nuanced questions. And so thanks to everybody who's been engaging in the chat box and providing answers. Um, a lot of what you were asking is in FAQs and in, is in other places, so we'll be Folks have been asking about the chat box. We're going to go through and you know sort through and um, see what makes sense to share. But um, with that, I think I'm going to pass it back to Melissa. And yes, for folks asking, you are going to have access to the recording. Um, the slides have been dropped in several times. Please check the chat box. Um, but yes, you will have you will be receiving all sorts of resources after this session. Melissa. Thanks, Heather. I hope you all um, enjoyed. Thank you again to Heather, Jen, and Sterling, who provided a great overview, nuts and bolts of ELOP. Um, again, we have shared this in the chat, but again, highly recommend the system of support for expanded learning is here for you all. Um, you can scan this QR code. We'll add the bit.ly link in the chat to connect with your um, system of support for expanded learning. And so next we, um, oh yes, also very important. CQI is um, essential in designing all of our events to support our expanded learning professionals. So your feedback is very important to us. Um, this feedback form covers the entire Spring ELOP Academy. So if you are registered to attend the other sessions throughout tomorrow and the next week, um, I recommend just uh, completing the form if you have time at the end of the Academy. Um, you can scan the QR code and the link is also in the chat. All right, so now we are going to transition into our regional breakouts. If um, every, uh, we'll open breakout rooms in a moment and you'll have about 25 minutes to engage in discussion, share some promising practices and also connect with folks in your region. And so um, what you have here on your screen is a list of all of our regional breakouts. Um, if you're not familiar with what region your county lives in, you can look at the slide and it will tell you, for example, region one has the listed counties there. Um, room three will host um, counties in regions three and six, um, as you can see that on the slide, and all of the other regions will have pretty much similar breakout rooms with their, with their regional number. Um, so in a moment, we are going to 
um, open breakout rooms. And if you're unfamiliar in how to join breakout rooms at the very bottom of your Zoom screen, um, you should see this toolbar here that looks similar here where it says breakout rooms. And you can join the breakout room by um, hovering over the room number to, to join or the labeled, the titled breakout room. Or you can also do it by uh, linking to participants and you can look at your, uh, you can hover over the breakout room number, which is here. Um, and also if you are experiencing challenges in joining, you can also rename yourself um, and you can rename yourself with the regional breakout that you need, would like to join. Um, and if that doesn't work, you can also just drop in help in the chat and our team will help connect you to the um, designated regional breakout room. Um, and so we will start opening up those rooms now and there will be re the system of support for expanded learning regional team support will also be in those rooms to help um, guide the conversation. And so I will open those rooms now. And again, if you have any questions or need support, you can um, add that into the chat. And I'm opening rooms now. So again, breakout rooms are open um, and you can, uh, they are set up to self-select 